So welcome back to our second ever episode of the Intrusive Thoughts. Oops, my bad. The Impulsive Thoughts podcast. Yeah, you better get that right because we already know what intrusive means. Yeah. There's bad. nothing to be joked around with. It's an actual mental disorder. Yeah, and you have something of those. You know something of that. You will never know. No, I do know. How, what do you know? Because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, welcome to our second ever episode. Today, we're going to be diving into the world of TikTok. We're going to be giving our opinions, our beef, our personal beefs, our personal trauma. And we're going to be diving in on how we're going to personally, single-handedly, double-handedly save TikTok. Save even TikTok? Though we, even though we have beef with TikTok. We're going to debunk it home and we're going to come out with the truth. We're going to talk about our experiences. We're talking about the experiences we've we've heard, we've resonated with. And just as you said, we're going to carefully craft a solution for the TikTok life. Is that good? <laughs> Whatever that meant in his language. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is that good, babe? Yeah, that was amazing. I think I did a good You right? sound very intellectual. Okay, so we're going to begin this off talking about our relationship with TikTok. And we got a pretty long... Wait, were you there in the Musical.ly days? No. I wasn't. Wait, no, I wasn't. Do you even Girl, know what Musical.ly is? I know what Musical.ly is. It's kind of like the cringe, <gasps> like, don't, don't disrespect the founding fathers. Dude, I remember, like, these white boys with crazy haircuts, like, lip syncing and throwing kisses to the camera. <laughs> yeah, that was that. true culture back in the day. That's my culture. Really? <laughs> no, I, wait, wait, wait. Talking about white boys, did you guys ever watch MadCon? You don't know who MadCon you is. always talk about MadCon. I'm getting jealous at this point. <laughs> because I'll never forget them. Okay. But not like that. Not like that. Like, they... But you know who Nash Gear is, right? Yeah. You have to know at who Nash Gear is. At this point, I think I know everybody. <laughs> I'm like, let me name them all down for you. No, but, um, yeah. I don't know why I wanted to bring that up. If you're if you're a Mad Con girly, put your hands up, put your hands up in the comments. You guys should be embarrassed. No, you should be embarrassed. Were you ever a fanboy of fangirl of any like anything in general? Were you a uh, stan? Did I you might stan? had a little little crush on uh summer. Stop the podcast. Oh shit. We're out of here. Am I caught? <laughs> on who? Go ahead, say and I'll say what your chest. No, uh, nobody. Wait, okay, if you tell me your celebrity crush, I'll tell you my celebrity crush. My celebrity crush... Um, celebrity, not influencer crush. My celebrity crush, I'd say, is Michael Barran. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I'm such a celebrity. Oh. Guys, we're thinking for our next meme of the podcast to do a wolf with ripping his shirt off. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, yeah, like, kind of like the... You- <laughs> I, I, guys, I am so sorry, but I mess up my speech so much. You guys should please comprehend that this is not my first language. This is my second language. Might, might be my third because, you know, I got that Portuguese on me and stuff let him, like that. Let them hear it. Uh, você, <laughs> eu, falo, eu falo português. Muito. Muito de eu português. Eu também falo português. Eu sou e trem língua. Você não fala português, caralho. Não te falando isso, mas você... Now, fala portugues. Damn. Damn, you really speak that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Você não. Você não. <laughs> eu, eu sim. Você não. <laughs> no. Bom dia. Carajo. Carajo. No, Anyways. no. Okay, 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 okay. Please apologize. <laughs> To the Brazilians and Portuguese people that might be watching this. I pre- I apologize to you guys. Please accept me into your country. I love your country. <laughs> Please, I love your music. Oh, so you just think it's about their music. Like, they're also human beings with feelings. And, and I love that too. And more culture. But Brazilian food. What is a Brazilian staple food? Picanha. Okay, and what does that consist of? Picanha. <laughs> What is that? Is that Picanha the Picanha is a, a type of meat, un corte de carne. Oh. You know, have you ever been to a Brazilian steakhouse? No. So the gist of a Brazilian steakhouse is that they have these skewers, skewers. God damn it, these skewers, <laughs> and they cook their Do meat. Do no fao portugue. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. oh my god! Okay, okay. Uh, breathe, I was breathe. hyperventilating. Thank you so much. But let's continue. So they have these like spades, like these skewers, and they cook their meat on it, 
And they, it's like a buffet thing where you, they go table by table offering you the meat. Ooh. Like me, like with you back in the day. Like just offering you the meat. You want some meat? I'll take some meat. <laughs> I so, like me so, so much. Michael meat. Me. Wait, let's hear your country accent. Goddamn, partner. I went to Texas to the tax state house. And I was like, this was supposed to be a buffet. Why do you sound like a Brazilian redneck? <laughs> what? What is a Brazilian Wait, redneck? Have you heard the accent? Have you heard the accent in Brazil? That sounds like a southern. It sounds like a southerner, like a redneck, but in Portuguese. Have you never heard that accent? No. But by redneck, you just mean so- southerner? A southerner accent. Uh huh. Okay. Like, I'm from Bakersfield, California. Yeah, this is my southern accent, and this is how I really talk on the regular. Mm, you do I'm that. Doing like, good. You do that good. Te estoy diciendo, soy de Bakersfield, California. Soy de Bakersfield, California. I can even do it in Spanish. Damn. Bro. You're re- like, it's almost like it's in your blood. I'm like quattro lingual. It's like in your veins, like it's in your genes. Your Are you gene saying pool. I'm a redneck because my mom's white? I didn't say nothing. I just said you're doing Mom, it. Mom, it's too good. Mom. Suegra? No shots taken to my sugar. I know my sugar will beat me up. Um, <laughs> Mom, if you're watching this, he straight got you a red neck. No, I do not. Special plays, special team, special players. Yeah, I don't think they know that meme. Let they us know do. if you guys know you that. You guys know who Sketch is. Come on. You guys know who Sketch no, is. No, boy. I'm, I'm such like, bro, I'm such a big fan Sketch. Sketch, I know you watch the podcast daily. So just hit me up, bro. Uh, we can uh, Baby, lock them doors and turn them lights down low. Oh, and we going nice and slow. Okay. Don't interrupt this masterpiece. Oh, harmonize with me. Oh, har- harmonize with me. Oh. oh. Dude, cat, get on my beat. Cat? <laughs> catch my beat. Catch oh, up. Okay, okay. Catch these freaking hands. You Boy, catch these around. cheeks. Well, facts, a bit. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, if you have, if you guys can notice, we can now dap each other up. <laughs> Improvements, podcast by podcast, mm-hmm. brothers. We, we took your guys's um, criticism very well. People were saying. Bring it a little close. It looks awkward. Y'all bitches look too far away. <laughs> and the lights yeah, ass. Bitches look easy to draw. <laughs> Did you guys enjoy yesterday's Sims video, by the way? If you guys haven't watched it, it's in the couple channel. Yeah. I thought it was a banger. Right? We enjoyed we enjoyed recording that. We tried to make a baby on Sims, bro, and our Sims were being such lames. It was not trying to get the freaky they con. <laughs> Dude, the funniest thing I think they call it Yahoo. Bro, it's not Yahoo. It's Woohoo. Oh, Woohoo. Woohoo with Michael. And you press it, and then her freaking character starts doing pull ups or and shit. She's doing sit ups and shit. Oh my. God. I'm like, that's not me. Wait, is it sit ups? It was sit up. It's Boy. not sit ups. It was a. Uh, like Post, a, oh, push ups. Push ups. Oh my God. We're so Mexican. <laughs> I just think we don't work out. Oh, uh, facts. I think no, that's it's what because it is. We, we, like, we work out in Spanish. Mm. Yeah. Pulia. Yeah. What's pull-ups right, we, can, we can stop. What's pull-ups in Spanish? Everybody knows damn well you ain't doing no pull-ups, girl. Everybody knows damn well you ain't doing no exercise. <laughs> <laughs> wait, God, wait, wait. Dude. Let's talk about how I went on a four-mile run today. And what did you do? <laughs> I actually put some sound panels on the walls. <laughs> and I realized halfway that it was not enough. <laughs> I wish you guys could see right now, but it, it looks crazy. Yeah, a part, a part, like it's my first time doing this. You know, this is a professional's job. Apart from it, like not covering all the wall, <laughs> they're so crooked. They're crooked. They're almost as crooked as Alexis's bottom teeth. But well, I know you ain't talking about. Look at my bottom teeth. Okay, Sh- you got braces now. Let's do a teeth spread. Teeth check. A teeth check. Okay, guys. So as you guys know, we're still starting the podcast. Like, we're still very new at this. So at times, it's going to sound like ass. We're also on a low-budget microphone. <laughs> so no, it's not. This was actually expensive. Seriously? It sounds yeah. like this? I. It's <laughs> it's it's not that the mic is bad. Is that we are in a brick room. So it's very echoey. Hey. We're in a concrete jungle. We're in a co- we're in the freaking concrete jungle, but we're making it out. Yeah. One day with this podcast, we're gonna have a soundproof room. Yeah. We're gonna put carpets in the walls, drill them holes, 
and we're good to go. So, yeah, we try to fix the echo in this room because since we live in Mexico, we live in a concrete house and it's echoey everywhere. So we did put some panels up. So we hope the echo is kind of gone. Yeah. But our first episode, like, I'm not even going to lie. I don't even know how you guys got through that because it sounds actually the original video sounded completely more ass like dookie. We ended up getting it fixed. The audio as best as, as much yeah. as we could. I have a friend that knows how to do like to mix audios and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And thank God, because he really saved us because it was pretty bad. But we just figured out that we need to speak into the microphone. We need to be careful with like our pops and stuff like that. And then we need to buy some equipment to like make it a little bit better. And we also found out that we just need to speak better, like yeah. in general. We just be. We have a limited vocabulary, <laughs> I, I fear. <laughs> Dude, oh my God. Alexis could not shut up about how last podcast, like my former speech and every single story time I did was like, like, like this and the like amount, that, like, you know. <laughs> the amount of times he said like, okay, I'm going to be honest though. I'm going to be honest. I never give a fuck about people saying like, but have you seen those podcasts like Alanize and like the Latino podcasters? Uh -huh. I'll see clips of it and people will be in the comments like, I lost brain cells. The amount of times she said like, in like a span of 20 minutes and now I'm so self-conscious like <laughs> So I feel like I talk worse because I need that filler word and I'm trying to be sophisticated and shit. And, oh my, and it's not working it's for you. It's not now. working. But yeah. I don't think I say like as much as you, boy. Oh, uh, no. I know. No, it was pretty bad. I'll admit it and stuff like that. But you have an excuse. Yeah. It's not my first language, guys. Like, I barely, like, I spent, when I went back to the U.S., I spent a whole year speaking Spanish because everybody is Spanish speaking until the next year I started, like, going more with the flow and stuff like that, but still saying very basic stuff until, like, I got with Alexis and now we speak English every day. So it got better, like, little by little, you know, but it was, it was very difficult because I had a very advanced, like, language. Damn, I said I did the like thing. Like, your vocabulary in Spanish. When I first met him, guys, he would speak to me because, like, I feel like it's very normal, like, sophisticated words in Spanish. But they're not really sophisticated when you use it unless you translate it to English. And then it's, like, hell, it's like, ain't nobody oh, yeah. using that word. <laughs> you remember that that's how I spoke? Yeah. Like, like boy, what the hell? I would translate the words in Spanish to English. Directly. And I would uh -huh. do it as fast as I can. So I wouldn't really put like thought into it. Uh -huh. So it would happen. And you're like, boy, what are you talking about? I know your vocabulary is not this good. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, what do I do? I'm like these sophisticated ass words, boy, we ain't in English class. No, yeah. But, but that's what I wanted to talk about. That in Spanish, my backup is that my vocabulary was, because not anymore, <laughs> but was like very good, very so sophisticated because I like to talk a lot in Spanish. But once I went to the U.S., I messed up both of my languages. Guys, also let us know how you guys feel about an episode where we kind of just talk about the differences about living in Mexico, growing up in Mexico since he grew up in Mexico and me growing up in the U.S. Growing up like as a Chicana and Chicana culture because it's completely different. What? You know what's crazy? Yeah. I just seen a comment. By the way, guys, we read your guys' comments. We're very Every attentive. single one. Every single one. We're Every. very. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you. I'm good at this. You're good, lady. You're good, lady. That's cute. You're good, brother. Boy, you used to call me brother. What was that stuff? Oh my god! <laughs> Let, let's leave that story for right okay, now. Okay, okay, Don't okay. forget it. Even okay. though I know you're gonna forget it, <laughs> we read your guys' comments, right? And there was a comment: Alexis is not Chicana. Oh, I seen that. And the skull emoji, like laughing emoji type B, like trying to make fun of me type shit. What the fuck am I? Didn't half yeah. read? Uh, it's just so crazy to me. Just because, like, you didn't know, you don't, you didn't know Spanish. No, I think they think I'm not a Chicana because I'm half Mexican. I think they think, a lot of people actually think this, to be Chicano, your parents have to be both Mexican and mm -hmm. you're, like, first generation. But the definition of Chicano is very wide. It's kind of so hypercritical because it's like, you got to be pure breed Mexican. Yeah. Both parents got to be Mexicans. If not, you're not Chicano. Like, that mm -hmm. is so ridiculous to me, guys. Uh -huh. And, the like, the, the reality of it, over here in Mexico, they see us as Chicano. They don't even see us as Chicano. They more see us as gringos. No, yeah, they see every single Chicano as gringos mm -hmm. because you come from the u.s you're a gringo to us mm -hmm. well to me <laughs> because when i got sorry. here i got the gringo treatment 
Uh-huh. All the way since I got here, me and my brother, all the way since we were kids, Even we were though, always the gringos, the pochos, the güeritos. Mm-hmm. Even though they literally grew up here since you were, what, five? Even if they found out that you were born there, like in his case, he was born in the U.S., you're considered a gringo. Like, yeah. no, it just is what it is. But it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, Chicano, Paisano, and stuff like that is terms that can be used in the U.S. to be more like special, like with ethnicities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But definitely here, if you were born in America, you're a gringo. Mm-hmm. You know, and gringo, although it's supposed to be a bad word to represent people like disrespectful guys at this point in time, like gringo is just like it's just someone from it's just the US. A term. Just like Chicano or Paisano is just a term that you know, we have for for Americanos. Gringo. You know what it is? It's because the way us like Mexican Americans use gringos in the US, we're specifically only talking about white people. So oh, yeah. like when I came here too, and I didn't know that they called Mexican Americans or like Latino Americans gringos, I was like, wait. We not talk about the white folks. They talk about us too. What's, what's going on in here? Uh, you kind of fit the description, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it honestly it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just what we're called here and i see it from both point of views of how people don't hear the mexicans here don't claim us mexican americans because the culture is so it it's not so different because obviously our families and our parents brought so much stuff over there from the u.s you know so much of the culture but yeah. also so much of the u.s a culture is ingrained into mexican american culture like it became its whole other subculture you know what i mean so i kind of see it but then i also see people from here don't see it from our point of view over there why we call ourselves mexicans because of the racist people in the u.s they don't even see they take one look at you and they're like you're not american you're not a true-blooded american you yeah. fucking mexican and that's how they are and i feel like people here don't realize the levels of racism over there because like my grandpa he's mexican he don't speak no english type shit he looks like a white nah he looks like a white mexican but over there he would look mexican here he would be like blanco but over there yeah. Boy, they would like send your ass back over the border. <laughs> They'd be racist as hell, yeah. bro. The U.S. is very prominent, like with racism in some areas. In some areas, like there's white people that are obviously are very respectful and very knowledgeable, and they're not ignorant. But there's definitely areas where like there's a lot of ignorant people and it's not just white people that can be racist any race can be racist as long as they're like discriminatory towards a different race but on the other hand in the rest of the world like the countries are not like mixing pots like how the u.s is so it's normally just like one race you know so or ethnicity it's they go by nationality like here in mexico there's obviously of all races there's even asian mexicans and they're just called Mexicans. But yeah. Deja cabo. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah. I'm like, deja cabo, mija. No, <laughs> but... Me gusta hablar. I need to stop talking like that. It's yeah, a little joke, that's guys. A little I, like... I promise. <laughs> okay, girl, we girl. Go pop up. Oh, no. Brother. I feel discrimination happens all across the world in different ways, but it's just very prominent to call it racism in the U.S. because of that, because there's like a very, there's a large variety of different races. You know, and it's a good thing. And at the same time, it's a bad thing. You can say because of like these racist people, like they're specifically being racist just for the color of the skin or, you know, type stuff like that. And like, that's horrible. But here in Mexico, I feel like everybody is discriminatory towards everybody the same way. Mm. But I feel what is what is worst here. And Mexico is classism. Once we do the talk about like U.S., Mexico, I definitely want to dive into the classism and the racism here in Mexico. Because a lot of people like to say, oh, and there's no racism in Mexico. There's no racism. Y'all, it's so deep. It's mm-hmm. as deep as a redlining in the U.S. You know what the redlining is? Like, it's deep, bro. Have you guys seen, do you guys remember those viral clips of like when the Karens were barely coming up? And how Karens were such a like big thing like in early 2010s and to 2020 Mm -hmm. type of guys the Karens here are still that are still that bad there is literal like there's Mexican Karens bro and the crazy part is them motherfuckers white too but they just white Mexicans but we're gonna get into that that's gonna be a very interesting episode but let's get into what we're gonna talk about today I know that was an interesting little topic. I know. We could go hours over that. We are, that should be our next episode, huh? We could just we we should just we should just press <coughs> talking on water. What is going on here? We should just press record and just talk and just talk. I feel a whole podcast would come out. We can do a four hour podcast doing that, dude. That's okay. What I was thinking. Okay, so when we started this podcast, we were thinking of it's gonna be on the TikTok theme, right? And we wanted to stay. We had like bullet points. We wanted to stay on track and stuff. And I feel like I could not talk. 
I think I have ADHD. Like, I'm actually pretty sure at this point. Because I'm trying to stay on topic in my brain and stay, like, on topic and in the bullet points. But at the same time, I can't do that and also let my words flow at the same time. Yeah. Like, I just need to talk and have no thoughts. You because know I can't have too much going on up here. Yeah, I feel the same way sometimes. I do this. I do feel you struggle more with it. <laughs> because, for like, guys, you know, for facts, like, when I've done my research for YouTube and YouTube videos and stuff like that and YouTube ideas and how to do better YouTube videos, I always see everybody's talking about how they do YouTube scripts. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Alexis never in her life would do a script because Alexis is the type of person that records, goes with the flow, forgets what the topic of the video is. <laughs> Presses stop recording and then puts a black screen at the end of the video. Sorry, guys, I forgot to do an intro. <laughs> no, and that's that's my style. If you guys watch my videos, you know I literally just turn on the camera and go with the flow. Yeah. And that's like I love those types of videos, and I go over so many topics. I lowkey feel like my videos be mini podcasts themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like my last video I recorded today, I did a six a.m. morning routine. Go watch it. <laughs> it. Should be out by now. Oh no, it's gonna be out tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Guys, damn, we're posting so much. Like we're on our grind dude like this shit's crazy like like comment and subscribe we're just so motivated guys we're very thankful that the podcast is doing good because guys we were so like anxious because like the quality wasn't what we thought it was gonna be like with the audience stuff like that but thankfully you guys loved it and mm. honestly we love talking yeah so this is like kind of like a win-win for everybody guys so we're just very appreciative of it so, and um in my in my video that i was filming i was talking about how we were telling you guys we read every comments i don't think you guys realize how much that means to us to see the nice comments and to see you guys genuinely enjoying our content and dming us saying you enjoy it like that motivates us so much because doing this and not seeing the results you want can be so dismotivating like mm. oh my god i'd be wanting to jump off a bridge like all these hours i put into this vid and it flopped and actually that's one of the topics we're gonna hit like with tiktok because this kind of applies to like all social media this is a big Ooh, thing on social media this is perfect to get into then yeah let's get into this tiktok thing so this tiktok talk <laughs> <laughs> the TikTok talk. okay so this weird tiktok stuff came up when I recently started streaming doing my Twitch stuff in Spanish because I feel more comfortable talking in Spanish and like that and obviously the audience that we have that Alexis has have they speak English so you guys don't really like mess with the streams in Spanish and stuff like that because it's hard to understand not everybody understands it so I'm like okay that's fine I really feel comfortable with it it's kind of a hobby to me so let me do a TikTok let me do a little YouTube channel where I can post my clips and maybe it grows you know I'm gonna treat it as a hobby you know but I'm gonna put really good effort into it because I want it to work because that would be so awesome that I actually become a streamer you know that's literally his biggest dream and this is when we're gonna get into our personal beef with tiktok let him know babe let him know guys i tell you and my first post you know the first post ever it's kind of like tiktok recognizes your new account and they're like why are you posting so soon you know normal people that make accounts for themselves like don't post it soon like, i understand that they didn't post my stuff you know mm -hmm. and then i started posting and like it was getting like the little views you know 200 views type b like it was flying like under the radar but it was getting a little bit of traction you know that's kind of when you get motivated like wow like i didn't shout this out or anything and, and it's, it's doing pretty good and yeah. it's doing pretty good because i'm like a small creator obviously you know mm -hmm. and i'm uh, getting into latin america like community mm -hmm. it was like that's awesome you know but then like the next clips i started posting it was only posting to like my friends <laughs> like the mutuals i have on that account it was, it was only posting to him not even to the people that follow him no not yet like, it would be dead ass three views like boy i know you're playing with me right yeah. now and then there's this thing that really pisses me off that it's in the creator tools and it's a creator tool that talks about if your account is like actually online and working and stuff like that and if your videos are posting and i press you i'm like okay you're obviously just posting to my friends because i only get the views about the friends i have and the likes <laughs> damn bless you i fucking went blind for a second <laughs> And so while that is happening, I'm like, obviously this is not right, but I'm just, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to keep posting it. And I've kept like consistent with it, posting and stuff like that. But they're like really not helping my case at all. And it's kind of like... They're not messing with you. Yeah. And, the, and and I think maybe like the horror games I'm playing, because I play horror games. I love playing horror games. Maybe the horror games I'm playing... Are too explicit. Are too explicit, too much blood or something like that. And I understand it. But no, there's a lot of clips of these games. Mm -hmm. And and then the other thing is like, maybe I'm cussing. Maybe I'm cussing too much and stuff like that because I like cussing in my content. I feel free with it. Well, I you look, go on your For You page, everybody cussing up a everybody storm. Everybody is cussing. I'm everybody like, is even being freaking racist on my For You page. Why is this allowed? Uh -huh. And why is my little content? Dude, it like triggered me because I showed you. My last TikTok, this one was explicitly talked about like, we're not posting 
posting your TikTok because it's not original content. Ooh, I just... streamed that clip that made it into a TikTok <laughs> and it's not original content. Like, what in the world? Yeah, TikTok, I feel, is one of the best inventions known to mankind and one of the worst fucking platforms known to mankind, especially for a content creator. And I know this is like so influencer of me, like, oh my God, your life's so hard. But I genuinely hate TikTok with a passion. Being a content creator, I love consuming the TikTok content. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be it's, on there for hours. It's a very addicting platform. It has its good sites, but it has too much bad things on it. Yeah, but also really good things. And we're going to get into that. The bad and the good and why we think the evil elites are trying to take it down. All of our theories, we're going to hop mm-hmm. into that. Yeah, let, <laughs> let's start. That's a little bit scary, but let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so we all know that TikTok has the ability to change somebody's life overnight. Like, literally, it is one of the fastest growing platforms. It can change the whole trajectory of somebody's life. And we've seen it happen so many damn times, especially being like a YouTube creator and seeing my sister grow grow from zero on YouTube. I'm low-key a Nepo baby. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. I'm a Nepo sister because thankfully I had my sister to kind of give me a kickstart on YouTube. I'm not going to give her all the credit, but I am going to give her a lot. Yeah, you should give me some. Boy, boy, get the fuck out of here. Just like, maybe like, just throw that 1%. Like, you could be in the credits down, the, down below in the description. All the way there, when everybody leaves the theater and stuff like that, like I'm all the way, all the way down there. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. That's it. <laughs> Special appreciation to Michael. And before my last name comes up, it's <laughs> Michael, but, <laughs> but, 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 I'm coming on this, but. Oh, 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 guys, I forgot. Before we get into this topic, guys, we want to do something on this podcast. When we're on our little talks about sophisticated, I don't know this and that. How do you guys feel if we have a sophisticated word of the day? Like a hella sophisticated word and we try to use it in the podcast. Wait, let's find that. Now that you're talking about the sophistication, the last podcast episode, the first podcast episode. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there's only literally one hour right now. (laughs) We talked about platonic relationships and stuff like that. That's what I was going to get into earlier. Guys. Platonic in English and Spanish has two different meanings. Say, say the meaning in English. Okay, so what I think, según yo, platonic relationships are just like friendly relationships, right? Something like that. Yeah. And when Michael was giving me this definition in the first episode, I knew in my mind, I was like, this shit ain't right, boy. This shit ain't right. But I'm gonna let him keep going. He think he, he, think he has something right now. <laughs> but sometimes you, sometimes you surprise me. So that's all I was like, okay, let me listen. Let me hear him out. And then everyone's in the comments like, bitch, that's not what it is. Yeah, everyone was going against me in the comments. <laughs> but like, platonico in Spanish comes like from amor platonico, derives from the philosopher Pluto, uh, Plato. Pluto. <laughs> and, and he talked about his philosophy was like, there's certain types of loves that are very like worshipped and stuff like that. But they're worshipped to a point where it's unreachable, where mm. it's just a love that you have and you feel, but it's something that will never be reachable. Mm. That's kind of what platonic men, and that's why there's like, I was related it like with celebrities. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, since it's a celebrity, it's never going to happen, but you love them. Like you feel you love that celebrity, but it's something you're never going to have. Uh-huh. So basically what you said last podcast. Yeah, that's what platonic, amor platonico means, you know, platonico. But in, in English, it's something different. It's just like friendships type shit. So that's his explanation, guys. He's actually very intelligent. Do not do my man because i will go in your comment and defend him till the end of this world yeah you guys can look it up if you guys don't believe me or believe alexis thank you babe you know yeah, yeah i always got your back it boy. feels good i'll it beat up good. a bitch for you really yeah hell yeah like, drag her or just drag like... her down the street and fuck her up fuck her and, up and teabag her ass curb stomper no maybe not that i'll teabag oh, her okay. maybe fart on her all right that'll really get her maybe fart on me that I already did that. (laughs) Okay, so let's get into the rap word of the day. We should have done this early in the podcast, but our minds just drift off and they just go. And drifting like a paper bag in the wind. Let's stop the singing, bro. So I can't sing? I just said I got you to the end of the universe and you can't even support me on my singing career? I don't even know that song. Ubicate, pues. Perdón. Una disculpa. No, you know what I was going to say? The people listening to us on, on Spotify are like, what the hell is this gibberish podcast? They're doing one topic, they're starting another one, and ADHD, like, oh, hold on. This ADHD ass podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nietzsche. Like, when they talked about, like, in elements and stuff like that, the clips you were talking about, like, uh-huh. definitely, like, this podcast should have been named, like, Dumb the, cli- <laughs> the Climbing Brain. 
Point, point made. The Clanny Brain Cells. <laughs> point made. Yeah, I was, Exhibit A. I was thinking of naming the podcast Two Brain Cells, One one Mic or something like that. That would have been sunny, funny. But yeah. maybe One Brain Cell because we're like soulmates. Oh, yeah, yeah. One Brain Cell, Two Mics. <gasps> Damn, do we still have time? Okay, you're off. You're off. I'm sorry. Cut. I'm cut. Sorry. It kind of like, you know? You know, it kind of like... Yeah, I don't get it. Like Drake is over here judging you. Also, guys, say hello yeah, to yeah. our guest again. What you got to say, Drake? He's just like... That's kind of no, like I think he's saying. like stank face, like he's dead ass judging you right now. Wait, we didn't even give an explanation why Drake is still here, guys. I know, damn, bro, our ADHD asses. <laughs> oh my god, okay. We're probably like 40 minutes in right now. <laughs> Wait, kind of, yeah. Like, damn it. Yeah, guys, so we still have Drake here because we forgot that to print new pictures like this, it takes like two, up to like three business days. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're recording this on a. <clears throat> You guys do not need to know when we're recording this. It's private information. Yeah, that's our information. That's for us for us to know and y'all to not find out. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually like recording it on Saturday and posting it on Saturday. Can you imagine. <laughs> imagine. That's really some shit we could do. That's really some shit we used to do, but not anymore. Because we're changed. We are on our grinds. This is our year. I'm manifesting it. We're going to blow up. We're going to be bigger than Emma Chamberlain, Theo. Hey, let's not call out people. <laughs> I'm calling them out. I want all beef. I want all We're going to be bigger than Joe Rogan. I'm yeah, a, I'm gonna go bald and I'm gonna take all of the demeanor of his publicity and stuff like that. The like, beaner? I'm the huh? Did you say the beaner? The meaner. Oh. <laughs> I don't think he got that in him. <laughs> okay, so what were you getting into? You're jambling at my yeah. brain right now, boy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. The podcast is a jumbo lumbo. I don't know what this is anymore. It's a bumbo jumbo. Wait, what's that? What's that African Gumbo. dish? Gumbo. I want to try not, that. I don't think that's African. Are you sure? No, I'm pretty I'm, sure it's that, African. That's like a southerner dish. Is it? Gumbo. <laughs> Have you guys ever tried gumbo? I look you want to try it. Mugbang? Mugbang? Hey. hey. We go to freaking South Texas just to try some freaking... And then we get hate crimed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways. No, hold on, hold on. Guys, so yeah, basically we, we didn't have enough time to print a new picture, but for sure we have a new picture coming up. It's already planned and everything. We're not going to spoil it. You guys be ready. I just got to say it's very sexy. Y pónganse listos. <laughs> yeah, All right, let's, let's get this wrap okay, up. Yeah, let's get this wrap. Give All me right, a wrap. chair. Chair? Chair, chair, bitch, you got something in your hair. You need to get up, bitch. Go get a fair to London. Get up out of here because I'm coming with these bars and you can't even. I always go back to bars and I try to, like, girl, can you be versatile? Damn. <laughs> girl, sit down, shut that mouth. And stay in your chair. <laughs> I gotta talk about greasy your hair. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. Let me grow up hair yeah. and tell you, girl, you smell like a dirty fair. But you a big old bear, and I ain't scared of no bears. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. You a big bear, and I ain't scared of no bears. <laughs> I ain't scared of no bears. <laughs> Yeah, you go out, bro. I know. Oh my Guys, God. sign us now. Fuck the podcast. We're get, <laughs> we're becoming rappers. And turn it into a rap session. Wait, that's the rap session. That's how you guys get, okay? Okay. Like, wait for the next podcast now. Wait, or for maybe the- <laughs> ten minutes you'll forget and do it again. <laughs> wait for the Spotify to drop. <laughs> Actually, we're on Spotify now. Oh, we got we are. That's like such a big accomplishment, even though it was low key easy to do. Yeah, I thought it was so hard to do, and then Alexis just woke up and like, babe, we're on Spotify. Yay! <laughs> it feels so professional though, like seeing our our podcast name. I know it. It feels amazing. Like what we can do Spotify stuff now. That's like, amazing. Ooh. We're official. So sophisticated word of the day. Let's look it up. This is a word. We're just going to find this word and we're going to try to use it to our best abilities through the rest of this podcast. And then we're actually going to get back on track this time and go back to yeah. the TikTok rants. I'm um, just going to I'm just going to go take a leak real quick. A leak? They didn't ask. I'm sorry. Watch out with my jumbo Tron walking by. Boy, that flat uh, booty. Just kidding. He got some booty meat. I would like some, please. Oh my God. I don't even think I can pronounce these words. Capricious, accolade, mellifluous, acrimony, amiable, angst. <laughs> okay, I got mine. <laughs> oh my God. I got a really good one. Okay, I got one too. What's yours? What's yours? I can't tell you mine. You're going to hear it at some point. No, let's do the definition because okay. they probably don't know either. <laughs> Let, let's do an, I'm going to do an example and I'll tell you. And I'll tell you. And I'm going to try to guess what it means. If you can even pronounce it right. <laughs> We're going to pronounce these so wrong. Girl, 
our podcast is for gratuitous. <laughs> I am not good at this. Let me read it. Our podcast is so gratuitous. I don't know what that means. I know what that means. What does it mean? Gratuitous. Like successful. No. Funny. No. What does it mean? Uh gratitude. Okay, let me think. This is this is um college Alexis coming out. Gratuitous. Okay, that stems from the word gratitude. Gratitude, that means you're being thankful, you're happy, you're um, taking in all the wonders of the world. So we are a humble podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it means. That was perfectly timed. <laughs> okay, what does it mean? No, it means kind of like uncalled for. Uncalled for? <laughs> like nothing is accomplished with the podcast. <laughs> like we just talk and ramble. And it's oh, kind of like uncalled for. I, I, I think that's what it means. <laughs> like I, I got it. I think I understood from it that it's kind of like like we're not getting somewhere while we talk. <laughs> oh, okay. Like we kind of like okay, it's not that good. You I'm just sorry. read the definition, boy. I'm sorry. I read it and it's literally kinda... just read it. I'm sorry. Okay, so mine is candor. Candor. Candor? Candor. And it means open, honest, Wait, secure. I'm not going to guess? Oh, shit. It means open, like <laughs> honest, and like sincere. <laughs> okay, yeah. So he got it, guys. Oh, my <laughs> God. He got it. What do I get? A kiss. A kiss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it means open, honest, and sincere. Example, the senator's candor during his speech won over many voters. The quality of being honest and straightforward. Damn, bro. These are hard words. Like, this is a real challenge. <laughs> I feel like our podcast has a, a type of candor that you can't see with other podcasts. Calor. I feel you. Like, no. I feel the passion. Um, um. No, I meant, like, candor, like... We oh, candor, candor, like kind of like you're opening a new door for success. A candor. new door, a new door to life, a new door for existence. Uh huh. Wow, that was deep. That was deep, girl. That was deep. <laughs> Let me not keep going and saying all this meep. <laughs> yeah, I know you kind of seen the success, girl. Take a peep. Yeah, but you know I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna take that leap. Stay on your lane, girl. You know you smell like reek. Ooh. And you know I'm going to go like a freak. <laughs> okay, okay. That was kind of crazy. I'm like, you're getting better every single podcast. We're two it's in. It's kind of like we're working on our speech abilities, you know? Guys, yeah, this isn't just a podcast of brain rot. Oh, also, we, had, <laughs> we also had a comment talking about our podcast is brain rot. I wanted to get into that. Guys, can we have just fun in life? Can we just enjoy yeah. the moment? Can we just let out a little giggle? Wait, wait, wait. Is it like the good brain rot or the bad brain rot? I think the good one because we're giving y'all straight knowledge. Like we just told y'all two sophisticated words that you can use in your daily life. I bet you never heard those words before. What brain rot? Great, great, great gracious. What was yours? Candor. Candor. Hey. Don't forget it because we're using it in this podcast. Fire. Yeah. Fire. I think we're brain cells regenerating podcast. We are. Mm -hmm. We're kind of like, like saving humanity at this point. Dude, dead ass. Dead ass. Like this podcast is what's going to save humanity. And that's why we're also saving TikTok. We, you are so, we, we are so right. We are so right. We are so right. So yeah. TikTok. Let's get into TikTok again. <laughs> <laughs> After all the circles we just ran. I walk a mile in your Louboutins. My Louboutins? No, you walk a mile in my Louboutins. I just want to let you guys know that I also ran four miles today. Give me a um, round of applause a for the cheer. comments. I'll, I'll edit it in a little cheer. Thanks. I need some validation, please, because it was so hard. I was fighting for my life. Okay, please, but nobody edit the motion I just did with this microphone. Please. Do it. Do it. Do I hope it. they cannot hear you. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Imagine people listening to this on podcasts. I mean, on Spotify. We're all wake up, wake up, wake up. And we're being for real. Y'all need to wake up. And that's why we're going to get into back into TikTok yeah. again. Let's, let's tell you about the real, the iceberg of TikTok. The iceberg of TikTok. Let's start really light at the top, at the sunlight. At the sunlight. And let's like deep blow. Oh, that was perfect transition. The brain rot of TikTok. <gasps> the dopamine. Let's get into We're going to talk about the bad things and then the good things mm -hmm. of TikTok. And why, yeah, get into the theories. We all know now. TikTok definitely is a brain rot app. But what's wrong with a little brain rot? I mean, um, but there needs to be 
balance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yin yang sign. No, let me tell you. So we know like TikTok is literally like timeless. Like you lose your time so much. Mm -hmm. You're so distracted and you just scroll, scroll. And this is like overstimulating as frick. As frick a doodle. No, no. Like it's so overstimulating because there's so much color, so much flash and so much stuff going on and like the human brain we are animals we're neanderthals we did not evolve to freaking make our brain look at so much different stuff at the uh -huh. same and be so entertained like that is insane it's literally frying our dopamine receptors like no, so yeah. bad like that's why we're so bored and so like nonchalant like people are turning like very nonchalant and like in their own lane because they're so overstimulated mm -hmm. like nothing makes them happy or entertains them because they've just been so over entertained so overstimulated mm -hmm. that nothing is working it's like kind of like when you don't get hard no more <laughs> Like that, the, yeah, though, for real. Like, yeah. literally, when you watch porn so much, or when you watch corn so much, it fries your 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 reception centers. So then, yeah, yeah that's exactly what it is. It's the same thing with TikTok. No, We're that, frying our deceptions. And that's a whole different podcast because corn is very harmful. Mm -hmm. Guys, corn is very harmful to relationships. And I, we'll give you guys the reasons. You guys can, like, maybe talk about it with your partner and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it is honestly, like, really bad. Corn yeah, it's is a bad. make, it's like, completely ruin relationships completely ruin marriages because it's so addictive just like yeah. tiktok is like i'm pretty sure us as a community we're very aware that we're all addicted to tiktok yeah. but we need to be put in more effort that's why you guys should watch our podcast because it's long form content uh, i mean it's not we're like we're just talking nonsense all the yeah. time dude i'm telling you we're generating brain cells one podcast out of one time Okay, but getting back to the topic on how I'm talking about, like, people are overstimulated. There's a good thing and a bad thing to this. Obviously, there's brain rot. There's crazy amounts of brain rot in the app. There's also very good entertainment. But also because people are so into their phones looking at stuff and looking for stuff, awareness travels very quick. Yeah, that's the good thing of TikTok. Yeah, that's the, like, the only good thing. <laughs> awareness, like, awareness about stuff going on in the world and stuff you should know and helping combat ignorance in the world. Literally quick. happens in TikTok and, and we, it's so quick, yeah. And we've never seen this speed. Like usually this type of stuff would take years, like even a decade to come to a consciousness. That's what I do like about TikTok because there's no other app like that where we can be get informed so fast. And that's why I feel like it is good in a way. But you need to be aware of it. Like yeah. I feel like you have to have a balance. Like personally, my for you page, I have the brain rot side. For the little shits and giggles type shit. <laughs> and then that fake ass laugh. <laughs> yeah. Do you love me? I love you. Okay, then. I love you so much. Laugh for real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't ever do that again. Anyways. And then I also have the side of my TikTok that's like such deep dive onto like important topics. Talking about capitalism, oh imperialism, talking about the processed foods in the U.S. Like it's so funny. <laughs> it's happened to me. Yeah, I'm scrolling through like these dumb like. The stuff that appears on my For You page is really dumb memes. Like, it's so brain rot. Brain rot. It's so brain rot. Like, actually, like, those wolf memes. <laughs> bro, it's so brain rot. But it appears on my stuff, and, like, it makes me giggle. It's so but, funny. Like, I, like, scroll through it, and then it's, like, President Bukele and El Salvador just opened the max, <laughs> max security prison. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely good to have a balance. But it's so hard. Like, I've been saying this in my videos for so long. Like, I'm addicted to TikTok. But honestly, you know what it is? I feel like if, if social media was not my job, like, I don't think I would be on social media like that or TikTok like that. I think I would really be in the real world more. Like, I would still be consuming my YouTube and stuff because I'll never leave YouTube. But I know how detrimental it is to our brain and shit, mm -hmm. TikTok, and how it's dead ass frying our receptors. That's my favorite thing to say because I feel like I sound so smart. <laughs> No, but but I feel like the people that use it, mm -hmm. like probably like a lot of the viewers and stuff like that, they use it like kind of like as a break, you know, like you're working. And once you go to a break, like what is the easiest break you can take on your phone, you know? Mm -hmm. And what are the popping apps right now? It's TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I do think like it's a cool like thing to have on a break and stuff like that. But I do believe like we're kind of 
conceited or spoiled. I don't know if this is the correct term in the way that we can be like, you know, like, oh, if it was for me, I wouldn't be on it, you know, like, because definitely like it's something that does make people happy during the day and stuff like that mm -hmm. in their break and stuff like that. It's definitely something that helps. And I can talk about that because when I was in school, when I would get a break or something like that, like I would go to Facebook mm -hmm. and just look at memes on Facebook because I'm so Mexican. <laughs> and like, it, I feel it's a nice break, you know, it's a nice it change is. of pace and stuff but like that. they are literally preying on us. Our attention span is dead ass a currency now. But, but let me tell you, uh -huh. so I do feel there's a good thing to it. Like it can, it can make a lot of people's days better. Uh -huh. But the bad thing is that when you have excessive free time, like what we can have because mm -hmm. our jobs are in social media, but with the kids, with kids, with iPad kids and like teenagers and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like it's detrimental. It is not a good influence. A lot of these influencers, Andrew Tate type vibes, they are not that good at giving advice. Yeah, we're going to get into that because like kids growing up on TikTok and stuff, it's so easy I mean, look at the people they're looking up to. Kai Sinat, Speed. Yeah, they're funny, but you also have to take a step back and look at the content they're posting. It's it's the stuff that they're influencing, like literally their YouTube videos, just making girls turn around and rating them yeah. and fucking talking about their body. They're influencing these kids. Like TikTok has such a huge influence on these future generations. But how I was saying, it's so preyful on us. Like these, these companies do this on purpose. They get us addicted on purpose. They know exactly how we're going to get addicted. Yeah. And they give no fucks. They give no cares about the repercussions on how it's going to have on the future kids. Because they, they're going to make money regardless. Yeah, they're literally letting the people deal with it. Yeah. So as me, as someone who's an adult, and my frontal lobe is almost done developing, actually. <laughs> well, I thought it was done developing like at 25. My It's early 20s for women and late 20s for men. No, it's but it's like 25. It depends. It's not okay. the same for everyone. But, but we're smarter than you. Just want to let you know. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, just to let you guys yeah. know. But like as me as an adult, I'm able to differentiate... Defi differentiate I don't give a fuck if I said that wrong. <laughs> Exhibit A, yeah. <laughs> Me as a person of condor, you know? And as a person Ooh. with... That was unexpected that was good I told you I'm gonna come at you it kind of sounds to me like you're just being very glucious boy that is not the word uncalled for <laughs> anyways so someone who has a conscience and I'm aware of how these brands prey on us like I'm able to put my screen time low whenever I want to consume content try to consume more long form content and like I know how to have a balance but these kids they don't know that oh yeah and these parents that are like facilitating it. Oh my god, that was very smart of me. <laughs> that, that was actually a good wordplay. That was play. good, huh? Mm -hmm. Not wordplay. It was good vocabulary. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm brain, You're her brain regenerating podcast here. Mm, facts. But anyways, um, yeah, the parents that are facilitating this, this needs to be more shamed. They need to be shamed. I mean, yes, but like, like I'm saying, like there's good things and bad things to stuff mm -hmm. because, bro. I've personally, I don't watch their stream, like for Kai and Speed like that, but mm -hmm. I've seen clips, you know, and it is like ultra, ultra entertaining. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it can make people's days happy and there's nothing bad about watching him. Mm -hmm. But like what I got to say, like with kids and stuff like that, like there has to be limits to this yeah. because they're obviously not the greatest influence. Mm -hmm. And they, apart from not being a great influence and kind of being like a little bit, I'm not going to say too much because I'm not talking shit, but it's a bit of like degenerate content. You know, yeah. they're doing a lot of degenerate stuff. Yeah. Like even I can find it entertaining at times, but me as an adult. Yeah, I take a step back and I'm like, bro, why are they talking about women? Why are they making these jokes? Like yeah. these type of jokes, knowing their audience is majority kids. Mm. Yeah, it's like, it's not that great of a thing. So there definitely has to be control with younger audiences watching this type of content, you know? Mm -hmm. But just like you said, like, since they're pulling out a lot of money and making a lot of money for these platforms... They don't they're going to push him and yeah. they're going to push him to the end of the world, you know? <laughs> they're going to throw him off. They're going to throw him off the world. They're going to push him off the no. cliff. Wait, okay. That really came out right. <laughs> that was so glucious. Uh, yeah, that was not very condor of you. Let me freaking get this word right. Glad, glash. Okay, let me copy it. Gladiator. Copy. And then we're going to go to, to the Translate app. Gratuitous. 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 That was so gratuitous. Yeah, you. it was not very condor of you. That's probably not even how you say it. Okay, let's see. Look it up. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. Guys, like Exhibit A, I'm so tired of using Exhibit A, I'm sorry. A clear example of that English is not my first language. I would never in a million years 
guess how to spell that right. You ready? Condor. Boy, I knew that. That was an easy one. That was an easy one. It kind of like, sounds like the bird. I'm like, Condor's a Bakersfield? <laughs> Duh, I knew this. I need somebody to make a tally of how many farts he's let out in this episode. You're going to stink up this but, no, no, room. Actually, you have not complained about the smell once, so that means they do not smell. And no, but point proven. And B, don't be gratuitous. Don't be gratuitous or biased here. We know my farts do not stink, but yours do. Okay, being Condor right here, um, <laughs> the, the room is We're getting... We're so unserious. <laughs> We're actually so unserious. The room is starting to get a little hot. So even if it doesn't smell, I think the the culpa, your fault, is on you. Really? Yeah. I don't think it's me. I think it's whatever's brewing back there. It's inappropriate to say that you look very Nunca. Dude, okay, okay, so let's get back on topic. Oh my god, bro, you're freaking. I'm sorry, like, I feel in love all over again. Oh my with god, Randy? Funniness. <laughs> I'm just so different. <laughs> okay, so what were we talking about? Yeah, Kaisenet and all them. Let, wait, let, let's just, let's just not names, but let's just call Boy, they're, it. They're not gonna watch this. I know, but let's just call it, like, what it is, you know? Like, it's this type of content. Yeah, it's not just them. It's a whole culture. It's a culture, yeah. Yeah, And it's it what's popping. Uh-huh. And I know the majority fault of this is of TikTok. But I'm really scared for the future generations of women and how they're going to be treated. Have you seen on TikTok the videos of the girls in New York getting fucking punched by a guy just walking down the street? No. Like, five videos on the same day. No way. And then another girl, I seen her do a TikTok... How she's walking down the street and like a 13-year-old boy goes by on a street on a scooter I've seen that one. and slaps her ass. Yeah, okay. Yes. That is I do feel, I do feel that it's wrong. And that can be influenced. And this is where I might be like a little bit biased. I know it's fucked up and it should never happen. No girl should go through that to go by their normal daily life. And now, apart from being scared of being robbed or abused and stuff like that, now we they got little kids to worry about, like, doing all this weird stuff. Yeah. So I will say this might be influenced by this degenerate type of content. But let's not forget, like, this has been the history of men. Oh, yeah, we know. The history of men has always been weird mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, we know. And there's always bad influences in your life with uncles, or even your own dad but can be weird like now that. Now it's a culture of little boys who genuinely think it's funny okay. and genuinely think it's okay to make jokes. Like I have been seeing on TikTok and like comments of people and their experiences of little boys in middle school dead ass making great jokes, but not even between themselves being so comfortable to make it to their their friends of middle oh, school. Yeah. Like I seen this one girl say how her friend said, oh, you're actually pretty cool. I was thinking about graping you. To his friend. These are like little middle schoolers. I've never, ever, like, there's definitely some suspicious jokes that were in middle school and stuff. Suspicious things we thought were yeah. funny. But never, I mean, we also had Slap Ass Friday. You know what that is? No. Slap Ass Friday, basically, they would go around Fridays and slap girls' butts. Really? Yeah, it never happened to me because I was Oh, my flat. God. I remember there was a time also, like, in elementary... You know how here in Mexico, mm-hmm. girls wear skir- skirts to school. Mm-hmm. There, I, I, I don't, rem- I vaguely remember this, but I remember there was like a week or something like that where it was like a fun, funny thing to do, where you were like try to like pull girls' skirts up. Oh my god! Yeah, um, I mean they so, have underwear and stuff like that, but like it's kind of like pantsing, but for girls. Yeah, and it's been so as you guys can see, like it's been a thing for a long time has always been but i feel like it's getting so normalized now and i'm really really scared for future women because let's get into these kick streamers oh kick streamers are horrible but before we jump into that i do gotta say this is alleged stuff to these streamers i don't want anybody out here to say that we're talking shit about these streamers and stuff like that no this is like the general culture culture that is coming up mm-hmm. with this type of format content we're not saying like kai I or none of these that. guys condoned any of these activities no nothing of that is going on yeah it's just literally the culture it's, it's like the culture is that now. is going on and happening and dude and go go with the kick stuff because no. in the kick stuff is where everything's going down uh-huh. and before we go into the kick stuff y'all can go put them toes down <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want to put my feet up so bad. Uh, Dude, you could go into any Instagram comments. I feel like Instagram's horrible right now. Like, full of degenerate little 13-year-old boys. I've seen this video of this girl. 
she went to go lay with her dad on the couch and like laid when she how she used to lay when she was like a girl and people were in the comments like i know her dad got a boner like saying the most weirdest stuff bro and majority of them are like middle school teenage boys thinking it's funny and it's like so sick because you can go in dude if any pretty girl blows up on instagram you go in their comments and they'll be like just completely bashing and degrading her like yeah. Calling her a hoe or a slut just for being pretty. Yeah. Like, it's horrible. It's really scary. So, without us getting to the kick streamers. Oh, so we recently, we saw a video in one of our trips. They didn't see it. We heard it because I was driving. But it was about this kick streamer that he would do, like, the Omegle type content. And he would get girls, like, flirt with them and stuff like that. By the way, horrible flirting. Like, boy had no game. He would use the same pickup line. But basically, the gist of it, it was to, like, riz him up and then ask him for pictures and ask him for the Snapchat. And once he got the stuff without their consent, he would, like, screen record or take screenshots and stuff like that. And he would post it, like, to a private Discord. Mm -hmm. Bro, this is where it gets worse. It's not just unconsensual, but there was cases... Where it was minors. A lot of minors. And he knew and he would be on his streams because he would be streaming this stuff. Like when he would go on Omegle with them, but the girl would never know. Yeah. And so he would try to either have them show something on Omegle or he would get their Snapchat yeah. and like get nudes from them basically. Yeah. And by the way, it wouldn't be shown on stream. Like he would blur it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But he would get it and be like, boys, go to Discord. Yeah. Just got a new picture. Just got some new intel. Weird, bro. And like the trick that he had like with minors and stuff like mm -hmm. that is that they would tell him the age. And then he was like, sorry, I'm glitching. I did not hear you right. And so they said that they were 18 and then he would then he would start his freaking Yeah. He would try to make you like a little joke. Like. So he knew these girls were underage and literally posting child corn, first of all. Selling. I think he even started selling it on his Discord, huh? No, yeah. Like it, a it's basically distribution of CP. Yeah. What was that guy's name? Let's shout him out. Let's give him a Riot. It was Riot. Riot. If you guys look up Riot on YouTube, there's this guy. I forgot what his name was, but he made a really good video on this because that ass nobody was saying nothing like it was just happening yeah yeah even the kick founders were cool with this guy yo one of the founders was cool and not and i didn't know about this but then you know one of the kick founders is a pedophile is like a pedophile <laughs> makes sense yeah makes sense so this platform of kick is where all the degenerates go to and they do all their content there if you're not a degenerate and you do content for kick i am so sorry for you but what, what you doing there yeah like it's full of people that they have so much freedom to do what they want and stuff like that uh-huh it's like and the crazy part is so he wasn't just doing that was it him or was it another streamer that was basically giving little boys pointers on how to grape or like sexually assault girls or people they know. Was it I, him or somebody I don't else? Remember. Maybe somebody else. But I don't remember hearing. I that. think it was Riot. I I do I do have to say that. Well, that's a form of sexual assault. What he was doing. There was a case where one of his victims, one of these girls, they told her, and she found out that she was a victim and stuff like that. And she was talking about like she was gonna, uh, she was planning on to like unaliving herself. Uh -huh. And dude, they did ass. Just talk to her, try to be the good guys and stuff like that. They hella used her for more content, like talking to her and stuff like that. And then, oh my God, like this was the epitome when I watched that video. Like I really, I was driving. I really wanted to cry because there is a girl going through so much trauma and they're supposed to be like helping her out. And they end up just completely using her for content. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Guys, watch this video. I recommend you guys yeah. watch this video. We'll put a link in the description. Yeah, we'll dead ass put the link in the description. This is a very interesting video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just basically making fun of her literally for content. Straight using her for content. Yeah. It, and and the, people, no, and this is a worrisome thing. People were enjoying this content. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. His audience are these young boys. That are going to grow up, that are going to go to high school, middle school, college, and they think this stuff is funny and they think this stuff is okay. It's because, uh, listen, i seen a video too and I think it was his video that was doing it. He was saying con consent is not taught in schools. It's taught with your families. It's taught with culture, you know? So uh -huh. if people are growing up watching this and think it's funny and think it's okay to act this way towards women, think this way about women, see them as objects... Most parents are not talking really about consent with their children, with their son. Has your mom ever talked about consent with you? I, I, I cannot honestly remember, but I do remember like 
it, it was something like with culture, you know? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So you grew up knowing the idea of consent. Yeah. Uh huh. And like even me, like when my mom. Well, I do. Ha- I do have to say, like, it's big here in Mexico. Like, especially like growing up, the culture of like, tienes que ser un mujeriego. Like, you gotta like go like try to get all the girls. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the vibes I would always get from everybody, and the guy that would get the most girls was always the cool guy. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like the vibe that has been going on like for a lot of time. Yeah, but it's very respectful. I've noticed the culture here. The guys are very respectful. Not all of them, because no they we can't, we can't, we can't dismiss the femicides here in Mexico. But generally speaking, like the normal average non-generate, non-degenerate men in Mexico, I feel it's more kind of more respectful than. The n- average not generate over there. What do you think? Even like, though this e- is a serious topic, you sounded a little bit gratuitous. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. But I just feel like uh, it's not a location thing. I think it's a men thing. It's a men thing. It's these psychopaths. Yeah. It's these mm-hmm. unattached from reality type mm-hmm. of men. Like, but what I was saying, it's, it's just very lost men that have lost the way. Maybe lost the ways since they were very young. But it's they not. They do this horrible stuff. It's not that anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like, these boys are growing up with this content. Mm-hmm. It's not now just these men who are outcast by society being complete weirdos. No, these kids dead ass think this is funny and dead ass thinks it's okay to view women as objects. And what I was telling you about the consent, like, it's crazy the difference. Growing up as a woman and growing up as a man, obviously, there's crazy differences. But I feel it's a woman experience. To have this talk with your family, this should be a talk. I remember my mom telling me, like, since I was young, since in my childhood, like, telling me the idea of consent. And if anything ever happens to me, like, nobody's mm. allowed to touch you like this. Nobody's like, that conversations need to be made. And I feel it's very normal to be made to women, but men. But not to men. Not to You're men. so right. Uh-huh. And it is right that that it's something that is expected for men to, like, understand but you definitely because I feel the idea that you definitely gotta let it know to your to your daughter is for the same reason to mm-hmm. to your daughter not to get abused of mm-hmm. or get tricked or any of these weird stuff. But for men, it's, it's like, like oh, it's fine. Like men are just supposed to always be chasing the girls. But some men they don't get this concept right. Yeah. Some men think it's okay. They get it confused. They get it really confused. So mm-hmm. I do think that it should be very specified mm-hmm. to men. Because I, maybe I, they did have a conversation with me about that, but maybe I just didn't pay too much attention to it. Yeah, but like me and for women, like this is something that is engraved into mm-hmm. us. Like this isn't a one-time conversation. Like this is something very serious that we always need to have in the back of our mind as women, and especially growing up as girls. So yeah, basically I'm just scared for, that is the real bad side of TikTok. Like this is, we're getting in, into the iceberg at this point. Yeah. Because I'm scared for the repercussions of what this is going to have on the future boys in the U.S. all over the world. All over the world, yeah. Uh-huh. And how they're going to treat women because we're already seeing it now. And they're, they're, the people who have grown up on TikTok, they're still young, you know? Yeah. Let's talk about the 4B movement. Have you guys heard about the 4B movement in Korea? So if you guys haven't heard about it, basically it's this movement where women are sustaining all relationships from men or disdaining. I don't know the right word. I'm just trying to smell. I'm just trying to sound smart around <laughs> so here. So gratuitous. <laughs> Anyways, um, but I'm being condor. But I have. <laughs> you smell like a condor. You smell like a condon. <laughs> Boy, Sorry. you smell like a bum. No, boy, you look like a bum bum. Bon bon? ¿Cómo se llama? Bon bon. Bon bon. Bon bon. Malvavisco? Like a marshmallow. Yeah. Bon bon. Bon bon. Yeah, so basically women are not having any relationships with men anymore. That means not dating them, not probably not even platonic relationships. They're not having, doing the deed with them. They're not having babies. And... They've been, this has been a thing for a while. Oh my God, another fart. Somebody tell you that down. That fart smell, very gratuitous. <laughs> oh my God. And you can see that, like this has been happening for a while because the birth rate in North Korea, no, South Korea is really, really low. Oh yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. The stuff that I've heard about Korea, oh my God. Like the things that men have done. And honestly, I see that as a future for the US. Like I see that's where the US is going towards because... I mean, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared for women. And I think it's a, becoming a bigger consciousness as women as a whole. Because we know how sick men are. Not all men, but a lot of men. 
And then now with these kids coming up with this degenerate content, how how's it looking in the mm-hmm. future? You know, it's uh, the odds are looking horrible. And, and especially because it's not just about like we're doing like it started off as we're doing this for all these degenerate men that need to like better up, like get their morals right and understand what is going on and why women like they do not feel safe. Mm-hmm. Right. But the thing is that now, like these company men and these congressmen are going up and talking about like this is horrible because we won't have enough workers. Yeah, that's another thing, guys. We were talking about this with my swagger earlier. It's crazy. We see, like, we're kind of going back. We're kind of going backwards with the Roe versus Wade. There's so many states that are outlawing abortion now, or making it a, mm-hmm. making it illegal now. And it really makes you think, why out of nowhere, you know? And I think this is one of our theories. I feel like the U.S. also knows where we're going as a society. And a lot of girls, a lot of women are... Supporting the 4B movement, me personally, maybe I feel like if we were to ever like anything happen to us, I don't think I would. I think I would participate in the 4B movement, honestly. You want to come back to me? Yeah, I'll come back to you. Yay! We're going to be together forever. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but like. So good, she would is. <laughs> my God, boy. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like the US. This is just a theory, by the way. Don't call me a dumb bitch in the comments. <laughs> but um, I feel like they kind of predicted that. And in a way, that's why they want to make abortions illegal in so many states. Because they want us to have babies. Yeah. If they have no babies, they have no workers. Because, yeah, birth rate directly, like, correlates with, like, a country's growth. Like, mm-hmm. it really correlates because exactly as they say, even though it sounds really bad. But the, the reality is, if there's a higher birth rate, there's going to be more work, more jobs, more opportunities, more money. And more money to grow these, more people to exploit, more money for these major companies. Yeah. So what he was saying about um, the government talking about we're not going to have enough workers anymore. So there was a video that I seen about this senator, literally in the Senate, and he had his whiteboard showing the declining birth rate of the U.S. And it's like really low, actually, like lower than a lot of like Asian countries. Mm-hmm. And he was saying like it's so hard to come back from that, almost impossible to come back from a declining birth rate. And it's crazy the way he says it. He's like he speaks about these future babies. He literally says our future workers like they see us as their little aunts in their freaking game of life to make them crazy billionaires they don't see us as humans but as machines to exploit for cheap labor i do okay so i do feel like it's worded really horrible i i do agree that it's something very bad that these big companies do take advantage of a lot of people and workers and stuff like that and people are gonna have to stay working their whole life in a miserable jo- miserable job and stuff like that but you have to see it, it because now i thought about it a little bit more you know once you think about it Every single adult works. Yeah, but... So we, we're we all workers. But he just made it sound like if he's not a worker and, like, these workers are... He's talking about, like, the people that are, like... But let's be there. honest. Let's be honest. Knowing the track record of these companies, of the government, of officials, do you think they really see us as anything more than just workers to get them billions? Yeah. I don't think people realize how far we are away we're more closer to going homeless than to ever in our lifetime being a billionaire. That ever. Is, and like true. and like the percentage is not even explainable. Like it's a huge gap. We are like, look, this is us from being homeless and like us from being the a billionaire. Room. The whole room. Like literally to the fucking sky of being a billionaire. Like it's insane, you know, that so these people can have this much wealth. There's no ethical way possible. That they can do this ethically. They yeah. do it by exploiting workers. So that's why I'm saying you can't give these people the benefit of the doubt ever. Yeah. <laughs> Especially uh, not no damn senators. De- definitely. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I was just like bringing out a different like perspective, Perspective, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of seeing it a little bit out of the box because I like it just clicked like in the moment like, wait, like everybody works. Yeah. So we're all workers. Uh-huh. But just as you're saying, like, OK, it goes a little bit deeper than mm-hmm. that, you know, like to what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's just like just as you're saying, like how economy works. It's so crazy because I was telling Alexis when the economy does good, like just like the peso that is doing very good right now. Like it's talking about like, that's great. Like people are going to be able to afford more stuff and stuff like that. But then you think about it and it's like it's only these big companies winning because guess what? Yes, people are going to be paid more. But guess what? Products are going to cost more. Services are going to cost more. No, so it's kind of just elevating prices. I think in the long run, 
it's not going to be something fast. It's not going to be a fast process. But I think the prices of things are eventually going to go down, especially stuff that comes from the U.S., which a lot of stuff comes from the U.S. And the reason why a lot of that stuff is so expensive is because the dollar is so high. So when it's lower, they're able to buy more products from the U.S. at cheaper. Like if somebody from Mexico wants to buy a house from the U.S., this is the best time to do it because the peso is so strong. But back in 2020, when the dollar was at 25, that's like, oh, the house is crazy expensive, even though in dollars, it's still the same. You get me? So it kind of works the you're same. Actually, you're actually no? getting it wrong. No. Oh. It would I be the I same ate. price in pesos, but it would be just like dirt cheap in dollars. So that just meant that the dollar was stronger back then and the peso was weak. But now that the peso okay, is doing better. Let's do an example. Say your house is 200K dollars. It's always going to stay 200K dollars. Maybe 205 k in like five more years, right? So say we're in 2020, somebody wants to buy a house, 200K dollars. So how much would that be in pesos? Let me bring my handy dandy calculator out. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean. Well, it was at 25, the dollar. It would be cinco, it would be 5 million pesos, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now a house that's 200K dollars. And right now, the dollar, and right now the pesos at 15, it's going to be 3 million pesos. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, things are cheaper. Yes, but but you got to understand Oh, I the was concept. saying dollars, huh? Yeah, you were saying dollars. And another thing that you got to start under, you got to understand a little bit about your logic. I'm not the most logic, <clears throat> knowledgeable about this topic. Might sound a little bit gratuitous. <laughs> but yeah, you said like in the difference of years, like it would have been cheaper and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like the people that are owners and business owners and the businessmen are not losing that house was going to go up in value because the economy did better. The house is going to be more expensive now. Well, yeah. I feel it directly correlates because now there's more, more things to take into account. But listen, these business owners, these rich people, they're never going to lose, honestly. Ever. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But for the average person, so we're talking about average person, buying more products, daily products especially stuff that comes from the U.S. Uh because the import fees are crazy, they're going to be able to afford it more, no? That's what you would think. But guess what? These stores now are paying more to their workers. They're paying more for the transportation. They're paying more for everything for the labor because now the economy is doing better. Now it's more expensive. Now now it's more expensive to them. So what they're they're, going to do, they're never going to lose. So they'll just up a couple of cents in their product, up a little, like a dollar, a peso or something like that. And it just happens little by little that you don't notice it. Like an example, I think I seen something about how the minimum wage in the in California turned to like $20 or something like that uh-huh. for fast food or something like that. I, I forgot what I saw. I don't know if it was April Fool's. But you also got to take... Oh, I, go I hope I'm not mistaken, but it talked about how, okay, they went from minimum wage to $20 or something like that. And then right away, directly correlating a lot of the prices... For these fast food restaurants, fast food places went up. All their products went up. And it's kind of like what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get paid more. But now every single service, every single product, everything is going to go up in price. But you also got to take account that the economy in the U.S. right now is straight shit. So maybe if the economy was better, don't you think the prices want to go up? Guys, we're not really knowledgeable. We're not economic majors. So let us know in the comments what you guys think. And let us know the facts. We need the economic majors in the comments down below. Who is right? Who is right? Because we've actually had this conversation so many damn times. And, and if you guys, and if you guys don't know too much about business and stuff like that, let us know who sounds more correct. Yeah. Like who sounds who sounds candor and who sounds gratuitous. Yeah. Who's giving more candor vibes? Like this side over here. Weep, weep, weep. Okay. So now let's talk about the good of TikTok. We talked a lot about the bad. And how it's literally deteriorating our society. But yeah. there is also so oh <laughs> much good. Yeah, put them feet down. I'm sorry. I, I like to cross my feet. Me like too. That. I want to put my whole leg. I always like how I sit in chairs. Michael be getting so mad. He's like, sit in your chair, right? You can't sit in there, right? I be sitting so, like, I have to have both of my legs up on the chair to sit oh, right. Yeah, she never puts her feet on the ground. And like when I work at my desk, I'm always doing crisscross episodes. Yeah. Oh my god, not just that, but you're always kicking stuff. <laughs> and dale. In every single place we've moved to, every room, every single apartment, every single house, she always leaves kick marks in the white walls <laughs> because she puts her desk too close to it. A normal desk, actually, this is just normal desk stuff, but she's just like, beep, 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 beep. Because I'm just a girl. You're just a girly pop having fun with work. Beep, 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 beep. So much fun. 
post. <laughs> but that's not the. But that's not a good description. I'm actually like this. <laughs> oh my god, I can't post this time. What am I gonna do? Oh yeah, right. I'm just kidding. No, I'm but calm. like, dude, I I literally tell her like, bro, get your desk, get your little your little itty bitty desk, and put it just a couple of inches back, and dude, then you won't he, do that. He wants and me you to, and then you won't do that to the one no more. <laughs> Gosh darn it, Alexis. Now, how are we gonna mix that audio? I got another one. He literally wants me to put my desk like two inches from the from the wall. Boy, bye. Why what? don't you put your mouth two inches closed? <laughs> that is very good. True, it is. That doesn't even sound right. I'm being very condored when I say this that you should put your mouth two inches closed. Gratuitous. Objection, Your Honor. Gratuation. Objection, Honor. He is not being condor. He is not showing condor traits. Objection, your honor. She smells like her boyfriend farts a lot. Yeah, that's pretty much true. Pretty, yeah. You kind of did your big be, one there. You be eating that shit. You be <laughs> type it. Yeah, bite your lips. I know, I know you're like tasting it in your mouth right now. <laughs> I didn't want to show it. Oh, not it. that face. Don't do that face. Now you... Okay, okay. So let's get into the good of TikTok. Y'all, the amount of stuff, how we were saying earlier in the podcast, the way information travels so fast and gets so much people educated in literal span of minutes is insane. Yeah. Like, imagine during the civil rights movement, they had TikTok. Crazy. And dude, first of all, talking about civil rights movement and the boycotts, was it the Montgomery boycotts? Let's get into it. I just think it's crazy how people cannot boycott literal fast food, literal coffee that's deteriorating your brain, that's not giving you any vitamins, that's just literally taking your money, taking your money and making you lose brain cells at the same time. How can you not boycott that? Like, this is so insane. This is the epitome of the US culture to me. Like, that's so embarrassing. How can something have that much of a grip on you, bruh? Like, let it go. You are literally a little pawn in their chest in their gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it's embarrassing, babe. You're letting everybody know, especially the people that be so proud on Instagram or on social media about it. Like, I'm going to still get my Starbucks. I'm going to still get my McDonald's. You're oh, my God. I hate that. Like, at least, like, you see what's going on. At least, like, just do a little bit of the cost and have... The decency to shut the flip up and not post your little stuff. If you yes. cannot manage yourself to not boycott something that is doing horrible stuff in the world, by the way, horrible levels of like Holocaust type stuff. You're like a horrible person. Yeah, you're a horrible, horrible person. Like at least if you can't control yourself and you're still going to get stuff and stuff like that and you have your own opinions, at least shut the fuck up. Up and yeah. don't be like, guys, you guys are so embarrassing. What is this gonna do? I'm like, we all have the same curriculum in school. Y'all know what the Montgomery boycotts is. Y'all know what boycotts is. So, how are you gonna say that boycotts don't work when we let her learn about this in school? Like, people just be so mm. embarrassing. And I'm like, it's just like, it's crazy to me. It's insane, guys. It's, uh, I mean, I understand if some people have their own opinions, they want to get their Starbucks. No, and stuff there like is that. no opinions, boy. There's only one way to be on about no, this. No, I do got to say, like, we don't support that at all. At all. At all. We're uh, completely against it. It's actually very fucked up. But yeah, I mean, at least if you're going to buy your shitty coffee, please, like, why? What is the point of you going against the cause that is trying to people help people? People think it's so funny. I'm like, okay, but if this was your family's home country, y'all would be, oh, like going hysterical as you should because this is literally insane that's a horrible part of the culture yeah literally. because just like you said like when the civil war stuff was going on and stuff like that now you think about it what if there was tiktok like what these incels Dude, what do you think they would have been doing have you seen uh the like tiktok skits of if there was tiktok during like slavery or during the these big crazy historical events and it was like yeah, I just don't feel like I'm educated enough to speak about this topic. Like, I'm not really in that community. I don't really see it a lot. Like, literally talking about slavery. Yeah. And it's so for real. Like, that's what influencers look like today. I'm yeah. like, y'all are dead ass embarrassing. Mm, uh, can you inform me a little bit? Can you inform me even though I'm on social media 24 7? <laughs> Please? <laughs> like, bitch, bye. Like, oh my God. That I've cut off so many influencer friends. I don't think I talk to any influencer friends anymore. I'm done. Like, y'all are so... I don't want you guys... We cannot have a genuine connection after this. 
y'all are weird. Punto. But um, what were we going on before that? Oh, so we're going on about how TikTok spreads information, the good of TikTok, mm-hmm. one might say. And yeah, a part of that is the stuff that's happening in Gaza right now. We would not have known. We would not have known the truths, the true atrocities without TikTok. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, the attack that happened on October 7th, we already seen how it was going in mainstream media in the U.S., even in Mexico. They were framing them as victims. And someone who is not in that background, who doesn't know a lot about that, like personally us, we really didn't know about the struggles of Palestinians. And like it just opened us to a completely new world. Like, like everything really spreads like wildfire there, Mm -hmm. especially like world events and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And this is this is an example I gotta tell you guys about it. Me, never in my life, I only consumed YouTube. Obviously, TikTok wasn't a thing, but I only consumed YouTube and I was never a reading comments type of guy. Mm -hmm. I would never read comments, but once TikTok started, it's like once you see a video that's interesting, you have to open comments. What do they come and say? Mm-hmm. Everybody opens comments now. And so everything is actually so engaging on TikTok. Mm-hmm. When something like that occurs, you go to comments, you go press on the blue comment and stuff like that. And this also ties into psychology. Like, I know there's a specific word for it, a terminology, but like, it's kind of a bandwagon effect. Mm-hmm. Almost. When people go in comments and they're seeing like people all agreeing about this. Then now you're agreeing with it too. Yeah, it literally because what it is. You don't want to be the odd one out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's just so much I've learned from TikTok that I've learned. I've literally learned more on TikTok than I have ever in my whole entire school career. So much. And it's so crazy. So much stuff that they hide from us, that they lie to us about. I'm like, they're going to come for us after this podcast. We were lock our doors. Imagine podcast uh, 100 views. <laughs> <laughs> I know, huh? Yeah, another thing with the shadow ban. Like even us saying the name Palestine we're probably going to get shadow banned from it. And that's how my videos were in the past. Like, it's this easy for them to control the media. And I feel like with TikTok, it's harder to control. And that's one of the reasons why they want to ban it. All of a sudden, these senators coming together to literally, like, all of them saying yes. My God. The senators, the senators. (sighs) Were you born in China? Oh, my God. No. I'm like, bro, get these old fucking farts out of here, bro. You know, there's people that are in the senator or representatives that were literal KKK members? I know, I know. I've seen that. I've seen that. This old, very old, old, like 89-year-old man still in Senate. Bro, that's a completely different life. That's a completely different generation. That's like five generations apart, bro. Like, boy, you don't even know how to work a computer. Get your ass Dude, out of the Senate. Yeah, that definitely shouldn't be the representatives Hell of the no. country. Hell like, no. I understand, like, the older, like, the more knowledgeable and wise and stuff like that. But I think that stopped to the point, like, dude, once you're hitting, like, 70-something or 80-something. There needs to be an age limit. Your brain starts literally. Your deteriorating. Brain, yeah, your brain starts deteriorating. That's why, like, President like, Biden, like, I know it's messed up. I don't know his age. I actually do not know his age. He does seem pretty old. Old shit. Yeah, he's really old. And then he's, like... Falling down, going to the airplane, he stumbles on his words and stuff like that. And for that to be the representative of, of like one of the biggest nations in the world, <laughs> yeah, it is insane. It's just embarrassing. Like there needs to be an age limit. Like I know these motherfuckers can't even drive no more. What yeah. you doing in the Senate? Making rules on our bodies. Like that's insane. Yeah, it's crazy that it just TikTok has allowed us to open our eyes to so many atrocities. What is it called? The comfort woman in Japan? What Japan did in World War II? Nobody oh, would have known about We did my. not learn about that. And you guys want to know why we didn't learn about what happened in World War II with Japan? It's because they had a deal with the U.S. So basically, if you guys didn't hear about it, Japan did crazy experiments, like the most craziest, horrible stuff known to mankind. And the reason why they got left off the hook and weren't painted as like Nazis like Germany is because they made a deal with the U.S. to give all their information to the U.S. so the U.S. can use all their data and whatever they learned in these experiments and just let them free, like, oh, kawaii, oh, yeah. <laughs> anime, love this country. But nobody talks about the horrible dark past of Japan. And I feel like we didn't learn this in school. We would have never learned this in school. Uh, we did learn that they were, like, no, actually, remember, when, like, back into those history classes, I do remember that they did, t- like, it was talked about that Japan wasn't the bad side. And they did some experiments. I didn't learn nothing about that. You didn't? Uh-uh. You, you probably don't remember. I remember this in high school. In high school. Because I learned I this in high history. school in the U.S. Oh. I learned this in the high school in the U.S. 
that they were obviously in the side of the and they were in the bad side. I forgot the name of the. Well, yeah, we knew we we're on the side of Germany, but I never heard about these experiments. I just kind of heard, like, you know, just wars are just horrible. We know that the experiments done in World War II were horrible. All these experiments were horrible in every single country yeah. that was allied with Germany. Mm-hmm. And Japan was was not even, they didn't fall short with all the horrible stuff they did. Mm-hmm. They did very horrible stuff. But that thing about how the U.S. took all that information, I don't think I learned that in high school. I, did, I think I did learn that didn't. online. Of course we didn't. I, I seriously don't think I learned this in high school at all. I did not, I don't remember having any knowledge that Japan did any experiments with them. I knew they were on the bad side, but. And then like the comfort women, oh my God. So basically the comfort women were women that they like basically just snatched up. I don't know if Wait, it was. What do you mean snatched up? Stole. Oh. Like you're coming with us to be with us while we do war. Um, oh, that's what it. Okay. So let me see. I don't know if it was just Japanese women. I think it was some Korean women as well. I think it was majority Korean women, but did I'm not too sure. Y'all can let me know in the comments. Did you know that? That would be fucked up if they're bringing Korean women and stuff like that, like not even from their country. But it is a thing that during every single war, baby, every single war dated from men. Like it was always, you know, yeah, war, know. conquer, use the women and the men that are still survived that are and that are of military age use as slaves. Yeah, That's I know. That's like the whole history and stuff like that. And they always had like... I know, but these, they literally like stole... Japanese women, they had them with them in their camps to grape them whenever they wanted. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. And like, this is stuff we don't learn on TikTok either. Like, just saying there, there's a, there is good to TikTok to open our eyes to this stuff. There's so much that I've learned. Like, oh my God. And I love learning about it. I love learning about history and all this. I know I'd be seen, I know I'd be seeming like a dumb bitch sometimes. I'd be throwing brain rot content out there. But you know what? A little bit, a little bit mix of brain rot. And regeneration, best of both worlds, right? So I'll Good take choice. I'll take some of your brain cells, but I'll like throw three back type <laughs> shit. <laughs> so sorry, guys, we got super political, but I think it's important to talk about these topics, especially with the rise of like brain rot content on social media. I feel like a lot of us go to social media to get away from everything, to have your comfort spaces, and I feel it's so easy to get lost into that and not be. In the real world, we can't stay in that forever. You get what I mean? Like, this is the futures of our future kids. This is the futures of us, of our kids' kids, our grandkids. We need to be aware of the stuff and the consequences that are going to happen after it. Because it's all fun and games right now until... Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. So, so I feel it's important to talk about these things, y'all. Especially being an influencer and having a platform. I hate calling myself an influencer. I'm a podcaster now. <laughs> <laughs> Streamer, but, podcaster, yeah. influencer, TikToker, YouTuber. <laughs> you know, I do it all the time. But I feel it's important to talk about this because a lot of people don't. They're too scared to get political. They're too scared to be on the wrong side. We need to talk about it, boy. You better get your ass up and go read a history book. Not a history book because they don't got shit in there. Go read TikTok. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that you know, sounds horrible. You you know what we're getting into? You know, like our parents that read everything on Facebook and like, I read this on Facebook. It's true. It's facts. That's how we are with TikTok. Uh, yeah, but, but I do honestly, agree. It can be seen like that because there is a lot of misinformation mm-hmm. on TikTok as there also is like on like these media outlets and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But there definitely is truth to stuff. And it's kind of like TikTok is something that informs you. Mm-hmm. And you can also make your own research on any of this stuff, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, And facts. you have the resources to do all this. Re- if you have access to TikTok, you have the resources to also research all this stuff, you know? Yeah, The important exactly. thing is getting informed and getting informed of what is existing and form your opinions on what is going on, you know? Mm-hmm. that's a, I, I agree. I think that everybody should always form their own opinions. Mm-hmm. But if you form horrible opinions, then maybe you're a little psycho. Um, maybe you're just a horrible human being. <laughs> There's like no way. Yeah. Point made. Punto, punto. Okay, so continuing with the topic of TikTok. Dang, we've really been on our shit with these topics. The oh, ADHD yeah. hasn't got up to us yet. <laughs> We're in front of it. Dude, I want to talk about AI. I don't think people realize like this is so scary. Oh, my. No. Dude, I thought my job was good, first of all. Uh, what was that? It's the I moved my chair a bit. This I, is there's a whole pyramid to all this AI stuff. Oh my god! So there's a genre on TikTok and YouTube. There's a niche 
about there's these online jobs that will pay you twenty thousand dollars a month, and it's all these videos. There's like literally thousands of videos with a lot of views, thousands of views talking about like do this, do this, and do this, and do this, that, and you'll make money online. And it's AI generated. And it's AI generation stuff, right? And there's these side businesses, side hustles, and stuff like that. And then you see these guys that are supposedly doing it and making a lot of money. If you're making so much money, why are you going to the route of trying to be an influencer? An AI influencer? Uh, AI, <laughs> it's no, basically scamming. Not just an AI influencer, but like they're a trying scammer. to... Grow, okay. Yeah. It's like a scamming thing. Like you're getting views. You're making people take your course. And you're also trying to grow your audience. You're trying to grow your own personal like image. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay... But you're making so much money. Why do you need to do like this content stuff, you know? Yeah. And it's like, what what do you what do you have? Because there's a lot. Like, what are you hiding? Yeah, there's way, way too many. Dude, and it's just crazy the amount of jobs that AI is about to take up. Like mm-hmm. I thought I was safe being a content creator, but they got they got virtual YouTubers now. Dude, no, no. AI is so crazy. I They got virtual Instagram baddies. AI Instagram baddies. Oh my God, really? <laughs> yes. Literally. Imagine literally. In the future, like, it becomes like couple channels with like virtual, like, no, there characters. is 100%. Really? Dude, what I think, wait, go with what you're going to say. I was going to talk about, like, I, I look deep into, like, that all that AI stuff. And literally, guys, all those Family Guy clips with above, like, a story, all these Reddit stories, it's all AI. All these fake stories, it's all AI using ChatGPT, all this stuff. They use a voiceover. They choose the voiceover they like. They put it. They take it to CapCup, do subtitles, put a clip of, like, freaking Subway Surfers and run with their stuff. Yeah. And you can make this content. I'm not kidding. You guys can make this content in like five minutes. And these guys, what I'm talking about on YouTube, these business guys, these business guys advertise it as like 100% sure. Once you start doing it and you see like, okay, like he's lying because it's not that it easy. It sounds personal. And then it... <laughs> no, it's not personal. Anyways, once you start doing it and then they're like, oh... You're just not doing it right. Join the Discord and, like, buy my course. Yeah, they're all scammers. We've been there. It's, like, yeah, it's so, like, it's such an elaborate thing. Uh-huh. And there's just so much about it. Every single year, there's new videos. Yeah, there's, every, there's new it's scams every year. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat uh-huh. scams, bro. And Especially, now AI is helping them. Oh, AI is big helping them. <laughs> but, um, dude, so I see this meme today, and it was, like, it says me genuinely tweaking when I have something to say in the conversation, but they're still talking and I'm going to forget. And that just reminded me of right now because I was going to say something. I was going to go on to something and you kept going and I forgot. <laughs> oh, so what I think, not even I think, I know this is going to happen. There is going to be whole virtual realities where people are living online, like robots having characters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But with like VR, like real life, like you're going to be in it. And it's going to be like, what is the line of reality? Yeah. Well, do you, you want me to like keep it real? What? What? I can't wait for that to happen. What? Like imagine all the like I think about it in the video game aspect of stuff. Imagine all the cool video games and features and stuff that can be happening with that. Yeah, it's really cool. Like oh my god, but like, it's scary. Imagine, yeah, it can go really deep and really scary. Very fast. Like very fast. Uh-huh. Yes, with all this stuff going on, especially since it's kind of like. It's going to be a VR kind of brain thing. Like, mm. imagine your brain gets hacked. It's like, yeah, dead ass. Bro, that's super scary because hacking is, like, so easy, bro. Like, I do it all the time. Like, I'm <laughs> such a hacker. No, but uh, uh, what was I saying? Dude, like, imagine playing League of Legends. Like, <laughs> VR. Like, I'm like, bro, hell yeah. Like that. Dude, oh, my God. You remember that Blackberry episode? I was just thinking about that. About the, the two best friends from the childhood, and they start playing Mortal Kombat, and then they start freaking... In the Mortal Kombat as, like, these characters. Bro. And they get addicted to it, bro. I'm like, that's what's going to happen yeah. in the future, 100%. And it's like, that, and it makes you think, like, whoa, yeah. How are you going to moderate these games mm-hmm. to make, like, none of these weirdos do this, like, horn stuff? Dude, and you know the craziest part is, talking about the Black Mirror episodes, there's this one episode where, like, it was kind of like an Alexa, and the girl put her consciousness into Alexa Ooh. because she knows herself best, right? And so she does all the functions of the house. But the conscious that got copied into the Alexa didn't know that they're now the Alexa. They thought they were still themselves in their natural body. So they're like, what the hell? But 
to the people, to the designers, to the girl who did it, it's like, it's not a real person. It's a yeah. conscious. But the conscious thinks she's a real person because that's all she's known. Yeah, the, that consciousness, like theory, that string theory is so insane. It's mind boggling. Like literally, because the, remember I told you about this game that I wanted to play this horror game called Soma. Uh-huh. There's this horror game. There's this horror game called Soma. Soma Burger? Soma Burger. No, I bro. love Soma Burger. If you guys ever go to Colima, go get it. <laughs> Those burgers we eat are like, bomb. We eat it like three times a week. <laughs> Every time after our podcast. We might get it after yeah, this podcast. Yeah, actually. I'm hungry. <laughs> was they saying? Okay, so this horror game called Soma takes place like after humanity ended. Basically, the consciousness already up- uploaded. <sighs> that was a crazy game he's telling me about. The consciousness your, already... Your consciousness is glitching. Stop being gratuitous. Let me talk. <laughs> so the consciousness already uploaded to this big like computer and it's protected like in the ocean like deep in the ocean and it's protected because like you can't exist in the world anymore there's no biological life in the world anymore and then what happened is that basically they put the consciousness of this guy in a robot and they're like it's year 2000 3000 something 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 and every consciousness is here under under like in the sea Mm -hmm. but like the world is not existing and the world the planet is literally about to like deteriorate and like be done for right so they're just to make it clear for you guys they're literally a robot a complete robot just with the conscious inside yeah just the consciousness is working here right so they think they're genuine humans yeah so you're playing as this character he has a name it's a consciousness but it's in a robot body Mm -hmm. so there's no human nothing there but there's a bunch of factors that make the game scary and stuff like that like it's a psychological psych psychology horror that's what those the genre the genre is called Mm -hmm. but basically let me get into it so basically they're just consciousness and his mission is to send this big like compartment thing like storage thing of the consciousness up to space so everybody can still exist in space type beat stuff you know Mm -hmm. i don't know how that would work with asteroids and stuff like that but anyways so it's going and then you're traveling through different like bases with your consciousness, and it gets to a point of the game where you realize, your character realizes, he gets copied to a different robot to go into the water. And then his- in the radio, he's he hears his old self. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. Who did I just hear? You know, because he's communicating like with this girl that is helping him out with the mission and stuff like that. But basically in the radio, he hears his old self. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. Like, why am I hearing that? And he was like, oh, that's you. That's your old self. You got copied here. This is how this works, that you're just a consciousness. And so basically you play you play the whole game, you know, mind-boggling and everything. This thing, this stuff keeps happening. And then the last part of the game where you upload, you're uploading your consciousness to make like the, the storage thing go up to space, like going to the rocket and stuff like that. So you're sitting there and you're uploading your consciousness to be there. Like finally, like we're making it there. And then boom. And then everything is dark. And then everything keeps like, falling like the earth is ending and it's like wait what happened and it's like well we pulled like the short end of the stick like we're staying here like your consciousness is up there so he's but you're staying down here he was now the conscious that got left behind so he was leaving his old consciousness behind Mm -hmm. and that's so crazy that's so crazy because we're obviously gonna be having robots pretty fucking soon in the world What is a line of something being real or not? Because when we think about a consciousness, when something gets a conscious, that's when they think they're real. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like... Your consciousness carries the morals, the knowledge. It carries... It's you. It's your brain. It's your brain. So can you even say that like a robot cannot be a real person or something just because of their body? You know what I mean? But they have the brain. Like, it's so crazy to even think about and so scary once you realize that robots can gain their own consciousness and realize they're their own person, bro. Like, oh, my God. Consciousness is such a fragile, like, complicated subject, you know, because because the stuff that we've seen about consciousness is literally like nightmare fuel, bro. Imagine you get your, like, just like that said, you get your consciousness to be your Alexa at home to regulate your temperature and everything because it's you and you should know what you like. Mm -hmm. But then your consciousness and then you're the one copied in there Uh and you're eternally doomed, bro. And going insane. And it's like basically like slavery. But to the person outside is like, dude, it's not even a real person. 
It's just so yeah. crazy to think about. It's, oh my god, it's uh, mind boggling. It just goes against so many morals. Like we yeah. hear about it and like no, like I would never do that. Like how are we gonna approach this? Yeah, how do you? Yeah, how do you approach this? Like because improvements? imagine when we have robot robots and everything. Obviously, Roblox. Roblox. We already got that actually. <laughs> imagine when we have robots. And obviously, they're going to use this for the cheap labor. Not even cheap labor, probably free labor. So literal slavery. But once they gain that consciousness, what are they going to yeah. be? Remember watching an anime about that? About robots that they, there was like a whole robot treaty and stuff like that. And these you robots were had that. A, I didn't watch it. I think you I watched did. it without me. So these robots, I forgot the name of the anime, but it's on Netflix. These robots had their consciousness and they were treated as humans and stuff like that. And they have their own families and oh, everything. I do remember. Yeah. And and the thing about these robots, there's a treaty that you need to treat robots as humans mm-hmm. and you know they're robots. But there's also in the same treaty, it talks about how a robot can never be programmed, never be made to be able to hate a human. Because once or you hate kill. a human, you can kill them. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So you can like these robots are programmed to never hate humans, but it happened. The code was so perfect that you're giving this robot consciousness that at some point this robot is like so much of a human that he starts killing. Uh huh. So that's the kind of like whoa, like because humans, I feel I don't want to say naturally. I think naturally. Naturally, you think are greedy and you know. I feel like that's our human nature. That's the what I want to say. The sins of the, that we... So, and also the scary part about like AI and robots, they gain information at a crazy faster rate than us. Yeah. So they're going to get consciousness. There's already robots, I think, that have gotten consciousness and they had to like fucking terminate them. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like... And like, why do people not think this is going to happen? They are rapidly getting information at like 20, 30, 40 million times the speed as us, you know? Yeah. Every second, every day. That's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, definitely. Like, robots are better than humans at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. Even though, like, if you think about it, in some planet, our form, our life form, our biology... is weird. ...can be, like... Aliens. ...robotly, like, designed. Uh-huh. Like, we can be the robots of a different planet. Like, no, you know, or, like, we, we're the aliens of different y- planets. Yeah, no, we are the aliens... But I'm trying to say, like, you know, maybe the technologies on different planets are all about, like, biological forms that what we're made of. You know how we have steel and electricity and all this stuff? Mm-hmm. But maybe they have the technology to be able to make biological life, life forms that are like us. Because we're, human bodies are so com- complexly, like, made, like, our joints and everything. Like, we're able to run and still be safe and stuff like that. Obviously, over time, like, it deteriorates. But our bodies are so complex and it works. Everything works perfectly. Biologically, everything in the human body works perfectly. It works so nice, so well. Imagine if that technology is able to be made in a different planet. And maybe robots are what is common in a different planet because just as our bodies connect and we have a brain that is like a computer and we have these nerves that get little shocks to move and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, these other planets can have that in the form of a robot or like, you know, it's possible that we could ourselves be be a type of robot. Yeah, it's crazy to think how small we are in the universe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, this gives me chills to even think about what is out there. And I cannot believe. I Like, there's no way there's people now who seriously think we're the only ones in this universe. Like, y'all who think aliens don't exist. Y'all are dumb as hell. Like, literally dumb as hell. Have you heard of the Black Forest Theory or something like that? No. It's talking about... So, if you're in a Black Forest... And you're alone there. You will you seek help by screaming without knowing what's out there, like what creature, if there's a bear out there. Will you make noise to give away your position, or will you stay quiet and try to survive on yourself? What would you do? Stay quiet, duh. Yeah. So that's kind of what can be going on in the universe. <gasps> They're all staying quiet. They're all staying quiet because there can be a bigger threat out there. And that's why we're sending signals out and stuff like that. And we never see nobody. We never get a response. right? Well, we never get a response and we never see anybody. Uh What if that's going on? Like everybody's staying quiet because nobody knows what's out there. Or maybe they do know what's out there and that's why they're staying quiet. It's so 
crazy, bro. Crazy. And we should do a whole episode on this because, oh my God. Dude, these theories, I love talking about theories. We like, do. I actually get so excited. I know. I'm like getting chills. <laughs> but guys, this episode is pretty long at this point. Yeah. And so. we're hungry. Yeah. Honestly, it's not about being long. We love talking to y'all. <laughs> we're hungry, bro. I'm like, boy, it's time to end this shit. Let's go eat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, y'all, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, it's another banger for y'all. We appreciate it. Every single like, subscribe, and comment helps us a lot because this is a new channel. And we're trying to get monetized. Hey! And also, guys, make sure if you guys are listening on Spotify, please give us a rating. This is our baby, and we're really excited for this channel. I had so much fun today. Yeah. I'm like, is this a date? This was so fun. I think this was this was more of a podcast because the last episode was more of a story time. A story time. And I feel this is like our first ever like real podcast. podcast. And we're definitely gonna do different types of episodes, story times, these type of podcast theories. We want to dive into whatever we think is interesting. Yeah. Sometimes we might talk about farts for a whole fucking episode. <laughs> uh, and then the next oh one. God. And then the next one we talk about astrology. Yeah. <laughs> we just hope you guys are enjoying the dynamic, and we're trying to like. Make stuff more entertaining with these complex words and all that stuff. We're always trying to improve. We read every single comment. So if you guys leave your comments down below, we take the criticism very well. Yeah. We'll talk about it in the next episode. And we just hope like everybody's having a great time listening to this. We hope nobody's getting triggered. Nobody, nothing. Like this is just our voices and our opinions. And as always, man, we'll catch y'all next week. See y'all every Saturday at 6 p.m. PST. And if you ain't here, you are square. Wait, that's not how it goes, huh? No. If you ain't there, you're square. If you ain't there, you're a square. Something like that. He Something just, like that. He just made me forget. <laughs> Let's just cut it out, man. Appreciate right. for watching. Love y'all, everybody. Appreciate y'all for watching. See y'all next episode. Love y'all so much. Bye. See you later, brothers. Bye.